During the recent Conservative Party conference in Manchester, UK Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch boldly asserted that Britain is, unequivocally, the best country in the world for individuals of color. This statement elicited a chorus of criticism from those on the liberal left who have often depicted the UK as a discriminatory and unequal society. Some critics even went so far as to claim that Badenoch was completely detached from reality, while a Guardian columnist accused her of whitewashing discrimination. In contrast, Kahindi Andrews, a well-known advocate for identity politics and the author of The Psych of Whiteness, made a resounding declaration that Britain is, in fact, the best place globally to be black. These remarks prompted personal attacks on Badenoch, a woman of Nigerian heritage, highlighting precisely why her intervention was necessary. For too long, proponents of identity politics have dominated the narrative, relentlessly portraying Britain as a systematically discriminatory nation, despite evidence that contradicts these claims. Ben Nutch's statement serves as a pointed counterargument to Meghan Markle's unfounded accusations during her high-profile interview with Oprah. It must be underscored unequivocally that if Britain, and specifically the British royal family, were genuinely discriminatory, Meghan Markle would have never been allowed to marry into the royal family, and her allegations would not have seen the light of day. Fortunately, the opportunistic individuals who exploit racial tensions for personal gain are gradually revealing their true motivations. Individuals who profit from movements like Black Lives Matter, securing coveted talk show appearances, signing lucrative publishing deals, and booking lecture circuit engagements, or even establishing questionable foundations to receive financial kickbacks, have little incentive to genuinely work toward improvement. It remains profitable for them to claim that discrimination is an inherent characteristic of every white person and perpetuate these movements. Meghan Markle's attempt to manipulate public opinion through her overplayed hand can be seen as an extension of this trend, capitalizing on her celebrity status to further her own agenda. However, while some influential figures such as Oprah, Tyler Perry, Serena Williams, and even Barack and Michelle Obama initially extended their support to Meghan, it has become increasingly evident that she underestimated the British public and the royal family's willingness to defend themselves against baseless allegations. Meghan's actions have had the unintended consequence of detracting from genuine issues and victims, as she appears to be driven by a thirst for fame and a sense of entitlement. Amid the growing speculation about Meghan's potential entry into the political arena, Experts like biographer Angela Levin have argued that she is ill-suited for a political career due to her thin skin and attachment to her royal title. While there have indeed been successful transitions from Hollywood to politics, with luminaries like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Ronald Reagan making a leap, it is important to note that these individuals were highly accomplished and influential in their own right. In contrast, Meghan's fame primarily stems from her marriage into the royal family, and she lacks the experience, dedication, and substantive achievements required for a successful political career. 